A very warm welcome to the MTSS Vlogcast series. I'm Lisa Collins, one of the founders of MTSS, and I'm delighted to be joined by Deep Cambay, who is the founder of Regenerating Business, an organisation very much focused on sustainability and ESG. Um, and we are in, in great hands today because the topic for our second episode is talking about the alphabet soup of those ESG frameworks. Um, it's a topic that is talked about quite a lot deep in the broadcast media and entertainment industry. What framework do I follow or what I'm following this one? Should we standardise? Should the industry just look at this? Can you make some sense for us out of all of those frameworks, please? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you're not the only industry struggling with this. I think as a whole, you know, uh, when you look at it globally, it's still very much, you know, kind of everybody finding their way. Um, lots of people at different points, different uh, maturity levels. So um, it's everybody trying to work it out as we go along. So I do not want the industry to feel alone uh, and out there in the abyss because you're definitely not the only ones. We're all working at it together. But to give some context, um, the ESG reporting frameworks kind of started to develop over a decade ago and it's only you know in the last decade or so it's really come into its own um, into the mainstream um, when we think about some of the very early frameworks in the marketplace GRI the global reporting initiative that launched way back in 1997 and it's still one of the most um, prevalent frameworks out there most um, popular frameworks to use out there and um, what it looks at it looks at the disclosures of of all in the broader sense of the e the s and the g the environment social and governance aspects and it has been developing over the years and got more sophisticated as time goes on but you know <laughs> you can see on the screen there are so many frameworks out there and there have been more and more frameworks been developing over since the GRI. So you've got the CDP, which is the Carbon Disclosure Project. Then you've got SASB, which is the Sustainab Sustainability Accounting Standards Board. Um, you've got the Greenhouse Gas Protocol. Um, so these are just some of them out there. Um, some of them very broad and lots of companies use it depending on the size. Some of them very niche and haven't been as popular. But they've all got their nuanced approach. So one can't really be benchmarked against the other. So that's where it becomes complicated. Um, but so when we think about CDP and the greenhouse gas protocol, that's very much focused on climate. Um, so that's very much looking at the performance. How are you performing um, with your carbon? How, how are you performing against deforestation impact, etc.? Water and all, all of those environmental issues. Um, then you have the SASB, which I think is really important specifically for the media tech um, and entertainment industry because these disclosures can be looked at from a sector specific point of view and if you go onto their website you can look at the standards you can find one connected to the industry and you can see what they're being measured against but this um, particular framework is specifically for the use of investors so to understand the environment uh, environment social and governance risk through the lens of finance how is it impacting the finance of the business so this is a very kind of accessible route to start with um, and then then there are more frameworks that have developed since then so is there's the tcfd another acronym which is the task force for climate financial disclosures um, and in the UK, that has become ma a mandatory requirement for large listed companies. Um, uh, and when you bring the SASB and when you bring the TCFD together, they are connected into a, a newer framework 
uh, which is the Inter International Sustainability Standards Board, which was formed in uh, COP26 in Glasgow in 2020. And the idea of that was to consolidate this alphabet soup and to really make an international standard. So, the t so there's a lot of collaboration going on, um, all at different stages, as I say, it's still very messy. Uh, but they're all working together to get this interoperability so they can work well together. So that's kind of one area. Then the EU, uh, which we'll talk about in, in later episodes, they have also developed frameworks that they have translated into regulation and legislation, which we'll talk about another time. Um, and those two worlds are where the kind of frameworks are kind of consolidating. You can see these two worlds coming together. Um, and then you've got the other frameworks outside of reporting that looks at a company holistically. And this is much more accessible when we're thinking about smaller companies in the value chain of large corporations. So there are two frameworks that I would recommend companies to look at to, just to get started. Again, we'll kind of um, explore that in later episodes. One is the B Corp framework, um, which very much looks at stakeholders, five key stakeholders, um, and understanding the impact across your kind of value chain and how it impacts different people uh, in different areas of your business and external to your business. And you've also got another framework, which is Future Fit. Um, that very much gives you qualitative approach, sorry, not a qualitative, a quantitative approach, uh, being able to assess your impact against ecological limitations and social foundations, essentially. And these frameworks are free to access, so it's very accessible, very affordable. Uh, it does take time to wade, your, wade through, so, you know, it I would recommend getting an expert to help translate that for you and bringing it into your overarching business strategy. Uh, but once you've got that set, then you've got your baseline and you can work towards um, improving. Let's expand on that a little bit. Obviously, you talked about um, B Corp and Future Fit being no cost. However, there are costs associated with time that you invest yes. in that. Should somebody be considering looking at two frameworks? Is that the way it works? That's a great question. Um, and it's not necessarily choosing one framework over the other. I think the kind of the first step is to kind of really look at your marketplace, look at your industry peers, look at who who in your industry, what are they what are they measuring their impact against? Um, so you've got these particular reporting frameworks that I've mentioned earlier. Um, so, you know, I know that Netflix, for example, they report against SASB, um, but they also report on other things as well. So they'll use other frameworks. So they've combined what really suits their business. So it's first of all doing an analysis uh, and kind of understanding what your peers are measuring against. And it's also the second thing to, to think about is understanding your business operations. What are the key impacts in your business? And to kind of see, you know, what is the most appropriate framework for you. But if, if that's still confusing, there's definitely opportunity. There's lots of experts out there that can, you can consult with and that you could work with to, to get a good idea of what fits you, depending on the ambitions of your own business. OK. And looking at any framework, um, it takes time. Yeah. And this is a journey um, and it's not going to stop. You have to continually um, change your processes um, to adapt with those frameworks. But on average, somebody starting their framework journey, how much time are they going to have to put in? I would say it'll be quite intense to begin with because it can feel overwhelming. But I think it's about not thinking about these frameworks as this is the framework over here. It's a separate project. This is the business strategy that we need to look at. 
and we so it's not looking at things in silo it's actually looking at your environment social um kind of impacts and how to how to integrate it in your business right so what is commercially material for, for you and uh, so it's about kind of superimposing what really suits your business so that'll take time to understand and kind of get your kind of baseline in place but as you said that it's evolving at a quite a pace um, so it's about keeping up to date and, and uh, making sure that you are evolving in the right direction for your business. Thank you, Deep, um, and thank you for watching. Keep taking a look at the MTSS website because we will continue to report on the developments of all of these frameworks. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you on our very next episode.